Hey y'all, good morning from a foggy East Tennessee. I am out on Melton Hill Reservoir today. Gonna be doing a video raw and uncut. And what that means is you're gonna see it all, start to finish. Every cast I make, every fish I catch, every fish I don't catch, and any limbs or trees or whatever else too, you see it all. I try to make these raw and uncut videos as if you are here fishing right beside me so we're going to leave the camera rolling here for the next one to two hours and just do some fishing man so i'm going to start working this shoreline down through here just throwing it down trees try to get up under the overhanging canopy of the trees there any rocks we come across you know just uh beating the banks man just doing some old school fun fishing i got my ultralight rod with me let me get the camera back in the chest here and i'll show you the bait we're going to be throwing today it's this right here. This is my favorite ultralight bait in the whole world. That's a one inch gulp minnow in the smelt color. 164th ounce jig head. It has a number eight size hook. I've got some two pound test line on my ultralight. This is a St. Croix panfish series rod that I have had for I don't know how many years now. It just keeps going. I love it. I keep using it. I've got a Daiwa 1000 series reel here. If I get my line unwrapped from my rod tip here, we're going to get started. We're we starting out with a line wrapped around a rod. Good hell, folks. I, every time I talk to the damn camera, there we go. Now we're in business, folks. Now we're in business. So, yeah, y'all, I'm just out here today. Going to have a little fun this morning. I'm in my pedal kayak. We got no motor, no electronics just kind of my bare bones set up fun fishing real oh we got a fish right here on the first cast this is the way to start it out right here folks he's small too so we got nowhere to go but up from here <laughs> bluegill go tell your bigger friends i want some of them today too maybe some bass maybe some crappie wouldn't hurt my feelings to get into some of them green sunfish i like them too something else that hit me yeah y'all I, I love doing this style of fishing this ultralight fishing just catching whatever wants to bite catching as many of them as wants to bite usually when i do these ultralight trips i catch you know 50 fish to 100 fish sometimes more in a session depending on the area and you know what kind of fish you're on i had another man there I think there's some small bluegill over there that's chewing me up. We'll make a few more casts there and we're going to move along here, see if we can find something bigger. There was another one that was hitting me. This style of fishing is a fun way to go out and get a variety of species and a lot of them. And today's one of them days, I just, I wanted to get a bunch of bites, catch a bunch of fish. Get a tug on the line. I wanted to come out in this kayak. I've been fishing out of my other kayak with the motor and live scope and all that. And it's good. Don't get me wrong. I mean, that's the better the tools you have, the easier it is to get the job done. And in this situation, the job is catching fish, right? So uh, I like that other kayak, but every once in a while, it's nice kind of get back to my roots and just fish. Don't have to worry about all the stuff. The only batteries that I'm gonna have to charge today is my own. <laughs> it's just kind of a way for me to recharge my own batteries out here without having to deal with a bunch of extra hassle on the water. So one of these days when YouTube is in my rear view mirror, this is how I'll be fishing all the time. I won't be doing all the other stuff with the motor and live scope and all that it'll just be a simple basic setup but hopefully we're talking about a, a far distant future <laughs> let's get on move here folks i ain't too impressed with that first tree that i rolled up on there one one bluegill landed a few other small bites we'll just make our way on down here there's plenty more trees just as bad as that one but if you're new to my channel or new to this style of video, I've done some of these last year. 
actually, I think my best performing video last year was a raw and uncut video. And so some people like them, some people don't. It ain't everybody's cup of tea, and that's okay. We all like different things. But if you do like them, well, I'm glad. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, we're going to get on a bunch of fish today. I feel like these videos are about as true to fishing as you can get. You know, most videos, and I ain't just talking about everybody else's channel, I mean, my channel too. I go out and I fish for a few hours, I go home, I edit the footage. You, you, you basically get the highlights of the day. It's kind of like turning on your news channel and watching the, the sports part of it there. You're not watching a whole football game or a whole basketball game. They're giving you a little highlight clip of, the, of it there, giving you the final score. That's kind of how it is with a regular YouTube video. And these kind of videos, it's just like you're out here with me. You're going to see it all. We're going through a little stretch here where I ain't really getting any action. You're seeing it. We go through a stretch where I cast into trees two or three times in a row. You're going to see that too. But if I also, if I pull up on a tree that's stacked with fish and I catch 20 fish on 20 casts, you see it just raw as it's happening there. So, like I said, ain't everybody's cup of tea and that's okay. I like it. That's the most important thing, right? If I got to do these videos, <laughs> it's kind of important that I like it. I love doing this style of fishing, especially this time of year. We're in the summer months here and water's warm. There's a ton of fish in the shallows. Oh, I got one here. Didn't even know it. I went to pick up on my line. Come on, fish. Get up here. Tell these people hi. It's another small bluegill. I'm actually going to keep some small bluegill today. I may throw him in my bucket here. I'm going to do a little. I don't know if I'm going to do it tomorrow or the next day, but I'm going to do a little live bait fishing with some smaller fish. And this bluegill here is about perfect size. so We're going to throw him in the bucket there. Y'all might see him in another video coming up. <laughs> That fish right there so he didn't want to be no movie star he wasn't trying to be on no video today There's something over splashing behind me maybe skipjack i'm you probably can't see much through the fog it's real foggy out here there's some small skipjack kind of busting around sporadically i do have my skipjack rod with me if they get close enough we'll cast at them i don't need any skipjack today but they are fun to catch, so we may make some casts at them. I went and loaded up a couple days ago in my other kayak, so that cooler on it's full of skipjack right now. We just, this time of year, we get in the spawn. Our catfish are spawning. And you either catching a bunch of small fish or you ain't catching nothing at all. So, I ain't been going through as much bait right now. Oh, I think something just tapped me right then. Oh, I missed him. I think we got some small bluegill over there terrorizing that little gulp. Now we one got it. One hooked it. Yeah, that's another little one, too. He's another there. It's about the size I'm looking for for my little project I'm going to do tomorrow. Tomorrow or the next day. We'll see. Like I said, y'all y'all may not see that video <laughs> if it don't work well. Let's keep making our way along over here. I hope run into maybe some green sunfish up on them rocks. May get some smallmouth in this area too. What I'm doing casting over there and I'm letting that jig fall most of your fish come on the fall if you 
new to this style of fishing or throwing a gulp, you're gonna, at least in my experience anyway, you're gonna catch most of your fish as that thing just falls down through the water. It kind of falls like that and them fish will snatch it. You'll either feel a thump, you'll feel a, a tap, you'll feel just tension on your line. Sometimes you'll just see your line swimming. Sometimes you get them real light biters. You may not, you may not feel anything, but you'll just, you'll see your line moving. You'll know something ain't right. That's how most of the fish get caught. Now some of them I do catch on the retrieve, but seems like bluegill and the crappie I get are mostly on the fall and, and smallmouth or a lot of those are on the fall. But the largemouth, the yellow bass, white bass, seems like a lot of them are on, I catch them on the retrieve. I threw over that dang branch right there, didn't dang gum it. Here's the biggest catch of the day. I didn't break off, fortunately. That won't be the last cat, the last tree we catch today, I promise you folks. You just stick around. We might catch some some oak tree, some walnut tree, hickory tree, whatever your favorite kind of tree is, I'm liable to catch one today. Stay tuned. <laughs> You sitting at home right now at the breakfast table or dinner table, wherever you're watching this from, you know damn well if you was out here, you'd be in them trees too. So I don't want to hear it. Don't be giving me no lip. If you and I was fishing together in a boat, I'd be over there on the shore right now trying to get you free from a from a branch. You know it as well as I do. <laughs> Speaking of boats, though, I'm hoping that we don't see none out here today. I'm filming this on a weekday. Here's a fish. I'm hoping that we just got the place to ourselves. Oh, hello, sunfish. I was just talking about you a couple minutes ago there. A sunfish, kind of like bluegill, except they get a little bit bigger mouths on there, different colors. That's another tiny one that's gonna go for our live bait project. He may end up being released unharmed in a day or two, if it don't work out. Or he may end up in the belly of something big. I'm hoping the latter happens. And things, that one right there wasn't very big, but the, the bigger sunfish, man, they fight like the Dickens on this ultralight. Everything's fun on the ultralight, even small fish. It's nice getting out here early morning hours. Just me and the kayak. Won't see no sunrise today. Ah, oh, daggummit. Am I pulling in? Am I pulling myself to the snag or am I pulling the snag to me? Let's see if we can get this one out, y'all. We may be breaking off. These early morning hours, get out here. I normally like to watch the sunrise, but too foggy for that today. But it's nice, nice and peaceful. No boats. Like I said, I ain't got no gadgets on this kayak that I got to fool with. Just nice. Just get back to nature. Listen to the birds, turkeys, squirrels playing in the woods. They can listen to me say cuss words because I can't keep my bait out of the trees. <laughs> Fortunately, we didn't break off right there. If I wasn't raw and uncut, I'd retie my line, but we're probably going to end up retying enough today as it is. I'm going to have a hard time keeping you from fast forwarding while I'm doing that. So we'll just roll with it till we break off. A 
I hear them skipjack all over the main channel, but the ones I've seen pop up over there look really small. I've been getting my skipjack lately in a different area. And some of the ones I've been getting, even though, you know, we're into June, now when I'm filming this, some of them skipjack I've been catching still got eggs in them. Pretty crazy. See if I can make my way around this tree right here. I can't believe we ain't really got on some yet. Oh, something hit me then. Let's see what this is. Another bluegill right there. Another small bluegill. I come over here today because I thought we might have a chance of getting some bigger bluegill. And we may down through here. This is one of the better bluegill fisheries in East Tennessee, in my opinion. I catch typically a lot more bigger bluegill here on Melton Hill than I do on Fort Loudon or Watts Bar reservoirs. Y'all hear that? The old saying, if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there to hear it, did it make a sound? I heard that in making a sound, but I was here to hear it. That's like a tongue twister right there. Can you hear the tree? I was here to hear it. Something fell though. Some bird and squirrel just lost their home. On the day of the internet, I guarantee you they somebody just started a GoFundMe. They're going to try to pester the hell out of you to give a dollar for it. <laughs> I ain't never seen the amount of charities that pop up for the most crazy causes. And they all seem to get money, too. I don't know how they do it. throw right over here on this rock I think that rock I think it comes out on like a lip and then drops off I think if memory serves me this area I'm fishing right here is pretty deep I don't have a graph to be able to tell you the exact depth but I'm probably setting 15 to 20 feet here where I'm at and of course obviously on the shore there the closer you cast up shallower it is but it drops off really quick water temps I would assume is probably mid 70s just guessing again without a without a graph no way of knowing for sure but you know it's kind of one of them things it's like People always want to know well, what depth, what water temperature. When you're doing this style of fishing, it really don't matter. You know, you're just beating the banks. Fish are either going to be there and be willing to eat or they ain't. That was a buffalo right there. I saw him. I don't know if I had the camera pointed in such a way that y'all seen him, but I just happened to be glancing that way when he come up. Yeah, this, this style of fishing here, it's so simple. You don't have to get bogged down with the details, you know. You can just let your mind focus on other things. And just enjoy the fish when you get a bite. Which we ain't getting a whole lot of here just yet. Well, here's one. That's another. That's a bass right there. Smallest one in the lake. But it's a bass, a little small jaw right there. If a trout fisherman caught a trout this size, it'd be a world record for them. <laughs> They'd have an egg on their wall. <laughs> a little old thing. It's some smallmouth. I guarantee you we've done passed by some big smallmouth coming down these rocks here. 
guarantee it. And I have caught a bunch through the years on this gulp setup. I know it's a small, tiny bait, one inch long, but you would be surprised at the size of fish that will eat this thing. Everything from various bass species. I've caught that bird. He's a little yellow bird. What kind of bird that is? He's, he's a neat looking thing. But I've caught just about everything on this gulp setup through the years. I one hit me right there by them rocks. We well, having a hard time here to start. I bet you I done lost 75% of the audience here. They're like, this sucks. Fishing sucks. Especially the kids watching. They're probably playing their video games by now. They ain't got the attention span for this. A lot of people think it's bad that, you know, kids into video games and stuff. And, and that they ain't doing outdoorsy activities like fishing and whatnot. But I'm kind of thinking, you know, if all goes according to plan for me, I'm trying to live a lot longer, you know. I'm, I'm trying to live another 40, 50 years. I may not, you know. I don't know what the future holds, but... If things go like I want them to go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be around another 40, 50 years. And uh, if these kids that are growing up right now, if they ain't getting into fishing, if they'd rather play video games and Pokemon cards or whatever the hell they do, that just means I'm gonna have less people to deal with on the water 10, 15, 20 years from now when I'm hopefully still alive and still out here doing the same thing. So. On a personal level, I don't know if it's necessarily a bad thing that kids ain't really getting into fishing like they used to. It may be bad for the state and fishery department, you know, they're not going to be selling as many licenses. It may be bad on the fishing industry not be selling as many bass lures and tackle and stuff. But, uh, to me, that just sounds like a big ice cold glass of not my problem. <laughs> so I got enough tackle right now for the Walmart and Bass Pro Shops sporting goods. If they if they closed up shop permanent, I'd have enough tackle to last me the rest of my life probably. So I ain't too concerned about the future manufacturing problems of the tackle industry. There's a tree right here coming out. I'm going to try to throw out here, let this thing sink down. I, I was hoping we'd have some fish kind of up near the surface this morning. To be an early morning, having all this fog, I thought they'd be up, but I really ain't getting a lot of taps or anything, even from the smaller bluegills. So see stuff like this I'm gonna let it sink down a little further see if we can get into something may get into some snags doing that dropping down into them branches and stuff but that's okay jigs are cheap I got plenty It'll give me a reason to a retie to give me a reason to tell you all about this magnet I'm proud of this magnet I've been talking about it ever since I put on this kayak but it's really a brilliant idea see it right there that's a shop magnet get to any hardware store put that on your kayak and now you got your jig heads here handy when you break off you ain't gonna get in tackle boxes and stuff that's about the best cheap accessory i've added to any kayak i can't remember what them things cost i, I think there's one is that a bluegill yeah we're gonna put this in the bucket too I can't remember what them things cost, so it ain't much. A few dollars. Come here, bluegill. And you quit acting out now. You keep acting out like that, I'll make sure you're the first one in the experiment. Oh, remind me, here in a few minutes, we put a few more bluegill in there. I'm going to have to turn my pump on. I 
back over here. I don't know where the bigger bluegill are at today. We ain't seeing many of them yet, are we? We'll get on some eventually down through here. Just keep plugging along. Look right here. What kind of tree is this I'm hung in? I'm going to break my line doing that. Yeah, I don't know what kind of tree that is, but we just caught it. <laughs> yeah, I think we're good. I need to retie, but I ain't going to. We'll just wait till I snag one of these trees to the point that I do break off. Tell you what, this fog, man, it's it ain't hot out here this morning, but it's humid. And when that sun burns the fog off, it's going to be hot and humid today. It ain't got real hot here yet, but it's getting warmer. I think today the high is supposed to be like 90. Let's keep making our way along here, y'all. I got some real troopers that have stuck with me on a raw and uncut video where we've caught so few fish this far into the video. But that's fishing, you know. Sometimes you, you go through stretches like this. If I was filming a regular video today, what I would have done is I'd filmed an intro when I got out here. And I'd be doing the same thing I'm doing down through here. Now, none of the fish I have caught thus far would have made the video. They would have been edited out. And eventually I'll come down through here and get on a, a tree or, you know, an outcropping of rocks here or something that's just stacked with fish. And I'll catch several in a row or get a better quality bluegill or crappie or bass or something and then that would make the video it would just be edited down and you know i'm gonna fish today probably i don't know four hours or so be a short trip this morning but my four hour trip would get shrunk down to a 15 to 30 minutes of the good stuff you know you wouldn't see the other three and a half hours of just kind of making your way along just looking for fish so it's all a matter of preference of what you prefer i think just being out here and on the water hearing the birds watching them sunrises that's almost as good as catching a fish almost I do like catching the fish though I'd hope to have already caught about 30 by now I want to start letting that jig sink down a little farther I think I think they're a little bit deeper today I apologize if I'm sniffling on camera at all it's Still, it, allergy season here in East Tennessee is about 365 days a year. There's something blooming, some kind of pollen. I don't know. There's something going on right now that my allergies are offended by. <laughs> my allergies are woke is what they are, y'all. <laughs> so you may, you may get a little sniffling out of me. I can't help it. Well, I can't believe we ain't getting something right over in here. Oh, we do have something right over here. I went to pick up on it, and I, I had my line around that tree limb right there. That's probably why I didn't feel him bite. What do you think, Bluegill? You want to come with us? I think you're a little bigger than what I want. We'll let that one go. That fish right there will go down there and tell his friends about the mercy that I've showed him today and I'll be a hero to that fish's parents actually they'll probably hate me here's another one 
Well, that's a bass right there. Let's see if he'll jump up for us. There he goes. <laughs> I knew that one was a little bigger. Finally getting on some right here, y'all. Two fish and two casts. That's how it's supposed to be. All right. Come over here, small jaw. I caught your little brother or sister there earlier. Get on in here. Yeah. He ain't very big, but that's all right. We got a we got a couple jumps out of it anyway, didn't we? We'll let him go. He'll go get big someday. I like catching them small now. Get them three, four pounders on an ultralight setup, you're in for a good time. It'll happen too. You throw this setup long enough, you'll get on. Well, we had two fish and two casts. Can we make it three for three? What do you think? Get your bets in right now. Get them in. Window's closing. I think I'm all bet against it happening. I think we're breaking the streak at two. Well, streak is broken. The good news is we're ready to start a new streak. Maybe a, a streak of cast without a fish, but <laughs> we're starting a streak either way. <laughs> That smallmouth might have a friend over there. I'm going to make one more cast in this little pocket. And I'm going to try to get it right. Well, that wasn't really where I wanted it, but we'll work it. Well, that caught a fish. That wasn't, a, wasn't where I was wanting it to be. Luke, I think you're uh, appropriate size of what I'm looking for. Normally, I wouldn't be too excited about a fish like that, but with me needing some smaller live baits, it's a good thing that I'm catching. Well, fiddlesticks. I think I'm over that branch right there. Maybe we'll catch a fish and he'll pull it off there. We ain't. Watch this. I gotta get lucky right here, y'all. We gotta get lucky. Lucky's my middle name. I'm gonna fix this back though. I'm gonna turn this gulp upside down. See if we can get another fish or two out. Uh, I don't think the fish has caused the damage on that gulp. I think it's been me. Throwing into trees is what's been the problem on this one. The trees will cause some damage, buddy. Let's see what we get right here. The wind's kind of pushing me in on this spot. All right, one more cast right here. That's a lousy, forget it. That's a lousy cast. I ain't got room to throw. The wind's pushed me up on this branch. Let's swing around. Well, we got a couple bluegill and a smallmouth on that spot. So let's go on over here to the next trees. That's a bad cast, but we're going to go with it. You can use, I'm throwing that 164th ounce today. That's my favorite size because it falls through the water so slowly. But you can use a heavier weight if you want to and that makes it easier to get down to the deeper depths a little quicker. Like if you know you're fishing water that's, you know, Ten, if, you're, if the fish are at 10 feet or deeper, it takes so long for this jig to 164th ounce size to get down there. You know, I think it's better to use a little heavier setup, but if you're 
fishing shallow or, or trying to get fish that are up in the water column like I'm hoping to stumble into down through here today, then this 164th ounce size is perfect because it has that slow fall, which is, I think, a big contributing factor to why you catch so many fish with this setup. See a tree coming into the water right there. I was hoping something was around it. Oh my gosh, I've done it again, y'all. Y'all didn't see that. Now I'm around my other rod over here too. Lord. skipjack rod this may be <laughs> my gulp may be the only thing my skipjack rod catches today I tell you what tell you while we're doing this we've got this mess going on let me just switch out this gulp get a fresh one on it ain't torn and got more gulp juice on it this is my pea cup if you're new to my channel I keep my gulp minnows in a urine specimen cup because urine specimen cups don't leak. Get a lid on, right? Those will keep that juice inside the cup. The gulp minnow jars, not so much. You can use any kind of Tupperware or whatever jar I'll go for the urine specimen cup because they are easy to acquire and a perfect size. I can put two of the one inch gulp jars. I can't remember how many fluid ounces are in those things. It's normally like 25, 30 gulp in there. But I can put two of those jars in the urine specimen cup. So. Anyway, you ever see me out, you see a pickup in my kayak, now you know. Some people think it's probably a little weird. It does look like pee, that gulp juice does look like you've peed in that cup, but I haven't tried that yet. I guess you could probably catch a, that may be an interesting challenge video. You know, these dumbass YouTubers do these challenges and stuff. I pee peed on a fishing lure and caught a fish with it. The pee pee challenge. You watch and see, somebody will hear that and they'll do it. Some of these YouTubers do anything for a click. If the day comes where I gotta take a leak on a fishing lure on camera to get a view, I just don't need the view that bad. I keep looking for a reason to quit making these videos anyway. <laughs> Just people keep watching. That's another. I, I ain't casting worth a flip today, y'all. I ain't done enough of this style of fishing lately. I'm I'm out of practice on it. It's what it is. I've been doing a lot of cat fishing, a lot of carp fishing. Been really into the carp the last couple of years. They've really become one of my favorite fish to target. They fight hard, they're abundant. I can go places where I don't see other human beings and catch them. I've really gotten into it. Been doing a lot of that. So it's taken away some of the other types of fishing I like to do, like the ultralight. Only so many hours in a day, you know. Well, I can't believe we ain't just accidentally catching some more fish down through here. How long have we been at this crap now? 39 minutes, boy. If you've stuck with me this long for as few fish as I've caught, thanks. You're a real trooper. 
Normally by now, I, I assure you, these videos have more fish caught. But, I mean, that's how it goes. That's the purpose of these videos is to give you the real life fishing experience. And if you was out here with me, this is what we'd be dealing with today. A few sporadic fish here and there. We'll find them eventually somewhere down through here. I don't think it's going to show up on camera. But there's a huge spider web right here. That spider has put some time in on that thing, man. That spider's going to catch more than I'm going to catch today. There's another one right there. That name is big, though. Them spiders, buddy. Some people's terrified of them. Like it's a real phobia. They ain't never bothered me, but here's something. What about you, Bluegill? You afraid of spiders? He says, heck no, he eats some things. Good news, Bluegill, good news. You're a little bigger than what I want. I'm gonna let you go. Uh, spiders never really bother me. It's the snakes. I don't like snakes. And I don't like ghosts. Them two things. Here's another one. Two fish and two cash, y'all. Maybe we're starting to streak again. Like Will Farrell, we're going streaking. I went that one on the quick release. Let's throw back over there. We're going streaking here, y'all. Let's see if we got us another one. There he is. We got three for three. Y'all gonna if we get up to double digits, y'all gonna have to do the math for me. Y'all gonna have to do the counting. I'll lose track. Let me turn on my pump here, y'all. Back to our streak. I can't yet. Hold, hold on, y'all. I gotta fix this pump back here. That vibration will drive y'all crazy. There we go. The three people that were still watching getting drove insane by that pump. I got enough fish in that bucket now, though. I'm gonna have to use that pump. Here we go. Four for four. Yeah, I think you're coming with us too, but I don't know how many fish I got in there now. I can't I can't count two different things at once. I've dropped him behind me here. Hold on folks. This fish was trying to escape on us. We got him though. He ain't getting away. Try it again. Can we go five, four, five? I don't know if it's going to happen. Yeah, it is. I just kept letting that jig sink. It's a better one right here. I think the better fish are probably deeper today. They're just not up. Yeah, this is the biggest one so far. He was, he was way down. Bluegill. Hello, Bluegill. Five for five. You're the first good sized Bluegill we've caught today. Let's put you if we can, I actually remember to stick my board in here. Yeah, he's shy of eight inches. He's probably seven and a half or so there. Compared to the others we've got though, that's a that's a Hall of Famer right there compared to the others. Let me back off this spot a little bit. 
see if we can go six for six try to keep the streak alive there let a little more line let that sink down some more I was kind of thinking that them fish may be a little deeper with no more action than we've got up in the first couple feet of the water column here's another one that was another one I'd let sink down a long ways Ain't no telling how many fish we've passed by down through here that we just didn't even know about. But, 30, 40 minutes in, we finally figured it out here. We got something going. Getting on a little better quality. Let me get my pliers on this one here. He's got a jig there a little bit deeper down. You lucky fish, you got that down about another inch, you'd have... Well, he said he's so lucky he's getting out of here. He'd about been gut hooked another inch down. Let me get repositioned right here, y'all. We, we got a streak going. I think I just lost count. Was that number six or seven? See, that's, why, that's what I pay y'all for, keep up with them things. I told you, by the time we got double digits, I'd have done lost count. We ain't even got to double digits yet. Somebody, one of y'all out there at home needs to be, have one of them clickers. You know, like every time we catch a fish, hit the clicker. That's one of y'all's out there. That's one of y'all's job for the day. But that was either number six or number seven in a row. So for those of you who fast forwarded and have landed on this spot in the video, we're currently on a streak of either six or seven fish in a row. This wasn't the best cast, but we're trying to, we're trying to luck into one right here. I'm trying to will this to happen positive mental energy right here. I think our streak's coming to an end, y'all. Dadgummit. Broke the streak. I'm still going to cast over see if we can get some more, though. Now we finally own a better bluegill or two right here. Just having to let it sink down. Having to be patient. tap they're there you just gotta you gotta get down to them it's one of the things I kind of struggle with in this style of fishing you know you get spoiled coming out and having 100 fish days where you just get them one after another you know and you, it makes you impatient when you go a few minutes and you don't get a bite, it gets harder to let them jigs sink down. We'll make one more cast over there, or we may have. We may have caught all that's willing to play right now. Fortunately, there's a hundred more places just like this where we'll get on some more. Especially now we know for sure we need to be letting that jig sink down a little deeper. Here's one. This is a better one right here. This is a better one. I'm not 100% certain this is a bluegill. I think this might be a bass. It is. That's a large jaw right there. There we go. A little better fish. Yeah, we just been come up here before you break that line on the fish. We just been fishing too high in the water column this morning. That was our problem from the get go. We figured it out now, though. Let's put you on the board there, large jaw. Oh, what we got? Twelve and a half there, large jaw. 
grow up and get big someday. Well, folks, I think I'm going to make another cast over here. We're getting enough fish over there still. I think I'm going to just get repositioned on it and go back over there. I don't know what it is. You know, uh, it's probably some brush or, you know, something unique right here that's holding that number of fish because, you know, for us to be getting that many right there, there's got to be something. But I can't see, you know, obviously it's whatever it is, is deeper down right there. Don't matter to me what it is. The only thing I care about is the fact there's fish on it. And I'm sitting here catching them. You get a fish like that little bass, I mean, he's just 12 inches, nothing nothing to brag about. I mean, them, them tournament bass fishing guys wouldn't give a diddly doo doo about that fish, but you got an ultralight rod. He had that thing bent in half. Let's see if I can get that one up under there, too. I ain't much of a bass fisherman. Never have been. Even back when I went bass fishing all the time, my teenage years, I wasn't ever any good at it. But I do enjoy catching them on the lighter tackle. All right, I think we're getting ready to, I think we're getting ready to move on from this area. I'm gonna, make a few casts there's some kind of tree branch right here comes out i'm gonna i'm gonna throw one right here and just kind of let it sink down a minute let me let out a little bit more line right there that's how it goes you know with this style of fishing i think I, i've gotten a lot of feedback from people on these videos that you know they trying to gulp or or some others you don't have to use gulp you can use any small plastic trout magnet um you know charlie brewer slider stuff bobby garland you know any of these plastics will catch you some fish but most of the feedback i have gotten has been positive they've tried it out had a lot of success caught a bunch of fish but occasionally i'll get a comment people you know upset they tried it they didn't do any good There's another fish and usually if you get to talk to somebody like that in person or you know if they go in depth on what they were doing that one's out of here but he didn't want to risk going to that bucket but usually when you investigate on it the people that haven't had success with either the gulp or a another small plastic they're using line that's way too big for the job they're using six pound line eight pound line and if you're trying to throw a 164th ounce jig and and that small one inch gulp if you're trying to throw that on six or eight pound line you're in for a hard time you're not going to get very good casting distance at all with that and usually too if they're throwing that heavy a line they're probably using a rod here's another fish they're probably using a rod that's too stiff as well you get a real stiff rod you're going to have a hard time casting the smaller lures too so you know those those factors coupled together it's going to make it hard for somebody to have success with this technique you really need two pound line to throw these lighter jigs four pound at the most but even four pound you're gonna you're gonna limit your casting distance a little bit and if your drag is set properly you can you can catch some bigger fish no issues i mean heck how many trees have i cast into now so far we're still landing fish with the two pound line I know good and well I've got some abrasion on my line. I'm in another tree right now. I'm 
come off this area here. I've got too close in on these trees. But if you'll give this technique a chance, y'all, you're going to have some fun with it. I promise you it's normally more productive than what you have seen out of me today. Although I am getting, I'm, I'm going to grind out a bite here. You just, you don't get skunk doing this. You know, it's just uh, not every day necessarily is going to be a hundred fish day, but it's pretty rare to throw a gulp for any length of time and not get a bite, not get something. You may not catch what you want to catch, but you're probably going to catch something. It don't hurt my feelings catching bluegill. I like catching them. They're one of my favorite fish to catch. Especially when you get on some big ones. You know, them little four inchers, five inchers, they don't, you know, they don't put the tingle in your dingle, but when you get on the eight inchers, and especially if you start finding some that's in that nine to 10 inch range. Well, that's a lot more exciting. A few years ago, I went and fished a, a trophy bluegill managed pond. Now this was pre YouTube, so I don't have any video footage of it, but this pond was managed specifically for growing big bluegill and it had them big uh, uh, copper nose strain bluegill which get a little bigger anyway and that pond was full of bluegill that were all one to two pound range I mean your average fish caught out of that pond was a pound or bigger it was amazing cost a small fortune to fish there but <laughs> it was it was fun Keep making our way along here. Hopefully that pump ain't driving you insane. Kind of just becomes part of the environment for me after a little while, but some people it'll bug the hell out of. This is nice though, y'all. I'm gonna fish a few hours this morning, catch me some fish. I go home, I'm going to unhook the kayak, I'm not going to have plug in no battery charger for no graph, no battery charger for no motor. There's fish. Just, again, the only battery that's getting recharged out here today is my own, my own battery. <laughs> so I think it's good for the soul to come out and just have a day of simple fishing. Just throwing a tiny minnow-like bait. Catching the heck out of some fish. I'm in my pedal kayak, but you could do this. In a paddle kayak, you could just walk the shoreline and do it if you got shoreline access. You know, it don't... The nice thing about doing these kind of videos is, is I think it shows people you don't have to have an $80,000 boat that's rigged with another 20000 in electronics and need a $60,000 truck to tow it around. You know, you just, you don't have to do that. You can go out and have a good time, catch a bunch of fish on a very simple setup. And if you want to get out in the water, you don't even need a boat. You can do a kayak or canoe. Don't need a big tow vehicle. I mean, I'm, I pull my kayak with a compact car. I got a Honda Fit that I drive around. and I drove that thing all over the creation pulling a kayak. I drove it to Tennessee to Florida. I just went to Ohio recently. I mean, it just it don't take a big vehicle to tow a kayak. And, you can 
pull a kayak around and still get 30 plus miles to the gallon and big trucks that people spend a fortune on hell they don't get 30 miles to the gallon when they ain't towing nothing plus I could buy two to three of my car for the cost of one of those trucks here's a fish I guess oh, it's an, oh he spit it that was a small mouth oh smally we got one jump out of him now, I ain't trying to talk he's out of buying no $60,000 truck if you want it by all means go get it you only live once but more money you spend on stuff like that the less money you have to spend on freedom and to me that's what I try to spend my money on is time the less the less expenses I have as far as vehicles and home costs and extravagant stuff then the more money I have to just buy myself time to do what I want to do which is usually go catch a fish and hang out with my dog and nap I like taking a nap too if I can get a 30 minute to an hour nap in here comes another one that's a bluegill here now they're on the quick release. These fish making it easy on me. Not everybody can take a nap, you know. They got to work a, a job plus a bunch of overtime to pay for their lifestyle. I'd rather have a simpler lifestyle and have more time. That's just me. These fish have got it made, you know. They ain't got to worry about money. All they got to worry about is eating and not getting eaten. And about once or twice a year, they'll think about planting their seed to go on for future fishies. But they live a, a lot simpler life than what us humans do. You know, we get all wrapped up and stuff that don't matter I'm as guilty of it as anybody but such is life which I'm hoping to get another 40-50 years out of <laughs> all goes well I can't believe we ain't got more green sunfish today. I feel like it's time for them to be really active, especially a place like this. It's got mostly rock over here. I may not be getting close enough to the shore to give myself a chance at them. On these casts, these trees come out pretty good ways down through here. See something right over there wedging them rocks. I don't know what that is. It's shiny. Maybe a can. Oh what that is. I ain't getting over there to find out though if I can keep myself out of these trees. Ever since I watched that Bill Dance blooper video years ago. And he was up under them trees and that snake fell down on him. I've always been hesitant about getting up under these tree canopies and stuff. <laughs> like I said earlier, I don't, I don't care for them snakes. Spiders, uh, they don't bother me. But snakes, oh, I say that and here I am. I'm, I'm hung up under this tree canopy over here. There it comes. Let's see what we've done here. Let's just put us a fresh gulp on there. That's 
easily fix that problem. Back to the pickup, y'all. How far are we at on time on this? A little over an hour. Not as many fish as I would have liked to have caught by now. It really don't matter how many I catch. I always want to catch more, but it's uh, definitely been a slower morning than I anticipated. This time of year, it's just water warm, fish are up. It's normally just really active, even if you're just catching small bluegill. I mean, you're, you're typically just getting tons of bites. I've had a lot of casts where there's nothing going on over here. Be doggone. I just switched out that gulp and threw into that tree. There it come. Fell out of it. There's a fish. That's normally how it goes. You, you put on a new bait or you have to retie or something and you, the next cast you, you <laughs> end up getting hung bluegill calm it down i'll get rid of you there throw it back over there i got close to the rock on that one yeah, that'll be a sunfish gobble that up something got me let's see what he is Bluegill. Yeah, I may throw you in the bucket, Bluegill. I don't know how many more of I really need, but I should be able to keep quite a few in that bucket without any issue. And better to have them and not need them than need them and not have them. I've missed the bucket, y'all. Bear with me. There we go. Well, I'm gonna throw back over there if I can. Trees right here, a little bit higher up. Get a better cast over there. Up. Oh. Uh-huh. Oh, well. Oh. Just a tease. Look at them girls at the mouse's ear. You think you got a chance with them, but turns out they just they just wanted your money. I'll let that sink down. I guarantee you we've passed over a, a bunch of better quality bluegill and probably bass too, just but not letting that jig sink deep enough today. I think some days they just, maybe they're moving up at a different time. Maybe something about the weather or the moon has kept them down. But there ain't as many up today. Oh my gosh, what a terrible cast. I hope a fish bites that and pulls it out of that tree. <laughs> Is it asking too much, fish? Help me out here. Here I have made all these fish famous on this video today. For the three people that's still watching and they won't help me out with this. Yeah, we're going to break off on this one. That thing's way up in that tree. What a mess, y'all. What a mess. Couldn't get... All I needed was one of them fish to bite that lure over there while well, it was dangling off the tree branch. And it would have pulled it free. Instead, I've broke off. You can't, get a, you can't get a fish to help you out these days. I remember a time in this world where, you know, people would people would help you out fish would help you out you know them days are past the days of Andy Griffith and Mayberry is long gone I'm going to go here to my magnet and get a another jig head I guess we're going to do a little 
not tying here on video. Well, there was something. I don't know if that got on video. Something splashed up right there in front of us. Thanks, fish. Thanks for trying to keep these people engaged while I'm having to retie. If there's anybody left still watching, I guarantee you they retie. Or fast forwarding right now. I can't get my words out. I can't tie a jig head on and talk at the same time, apparently. Back to the pickup. There's all kinds of fish splashing out through here, but I don't know what they are. I know there was some small skipjack earlier. I saw a carp. I don't know what those are. Goodness gracious, I can't get the damn lid on, y'all. I'm in bad shape here, folks. There we go. Now we cooking with Crisco. Put this thing on. You put these gulp on, need to be straight as you can. Any plastic. You want it to be straight. That'll help it fall better through the water. If you got them on crooked, you'll get a a helicopter effect as they sink down and that can cost you some fish you'll still catch some but you'll catch more if it's on there straight and it kind of glides down all right we freshly tied new jig head new gulp you know what's that old saying new year new new me we're ready to catch one now by gosh couple trees hanging out over here. I think we're probably going to get something on. I'm going to just throw over here behind me and bring this thing up on the surface. Something hit me. I think that may be them small skipjack. Let's just make a couple casts over here, y'all. Whatever keeps bouncing around over here. Of course, they're going to quit now that I start casting over here. Yeah, of course. I think they're over here on this side of me now. This last cast, if we don't get something, we're going to get back to these bushes and trees over here. They were just bouncing or splashing around right here by the kayak. I wanted to see if I could get one. No. All right. Back to doing what we came out here to do. There's another right there beside me. They're taunting me. That ought to be something living on that tree. They ought to be. Don't mean they will be, but I ain't gonna find out because I'm hung in that tree. I just retied. I'm going to get this. I don't care if it does spook these fish. Oh, I see what I'm hung in. I'm in a branch right there. I hope we get this one back. Like I said, you 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 retie. It never fails. You're going to get snagged up real quick. There we go. I probably spooked every fish that was on that tree, but by gosh, we got our bait back. While I'm over here, let me make a better cast than that, hopefully. Oh my gosh, two terrible cast there we go that's better <laughs> I got where I wanted third time's a charm well 
nothing. Well, we're gonna move along here since I done spooked every fish on that tree. Getting over there on top of it. I had high hopes for that tree. All it wanted to do was eat my jig though. Some of them trees stingy like that. Make a way on the other side of it here. And throw at that one. Yeah, there's another one coming out right there. Hopefully have something on it. Fishy. Where you be at, fishy? Nothing on that one. I keep teasing you, saying one of these, here's, we got something on here. One of these trees will end up being loaded with fish, but you sometimes got to sort through a bunch of trees that ain't to find it. What are you doing, bluegill? You're a, one of the better bluegill of the morning. Looking for your friends. Looking for some of your crappie friends, too. Got no crappie. Let's see what all we got today so far. We got bluegill, got that one sunfish. Small mouth, large mouth, four species. The longest streak was six or seven fish in a row so far. We still getting some action though, you know. Like I said, you, you do this long enough, you make enough casts, even on a slow day. You gonna grind out a bite. I don't know how many fish I'll end up with today, but more than what I would have caught sitting at the house. <laughs> That's for sure. All right, just one off that tree. something jumping over there under that canopy ain't no docks or anything down this stretch of the of the river here the lake this is I'm on Melton Hill Reservoir today this is part of the Clinch River and this section through here is, is pretty well just just trees there's no houses no docks it's it's honestly kind of nice because you don't have to deal with very many people this occasional bass boat or something going by but they ain't people out mowing their yards or doing their wakeboard crap you don't have all that through here so it's kind of nice but the fish don't have docks and stuff to get around so it's kind of all natural cover as I've went around another branch here. Lordy days, folks. Now I'm in that one. Not my best casting performance today. We're making it work though. Spin around here and see what we can get off this other tree over here. Well, the nice things about this, my old town kayak here has this bicycle style pedal system. And so I can more easily maneuver around these trees and objects and stuff than what I can with the, my Hobie drive that I used there for a long time obviously now with the electric motor i have on my hobie i can do whatever i want now with it but this style of pedal drive if you're doing this 
kind of fishing like I am today is a whole lot easier than with that Mirage drive or the fin style pedal system. I thought I had a fish on right then. cast over here I just got a feeling I'm gonna catch one on that cast anybody want to bet me a, a nickel I think it's gonna happen I still think it's gonna happen I'm gonna let out a little more line give a cast enough time who knows what will happen that thing sink down I'm going to owe somebody a nickel, I think. It's a good thing this wasn't an official bet. We didn't shake on it. So I'd owe you a nickel right now. Somebody had been a nickel richer. That's a small enough amount, too. You wouldn't have had to report it on your taxes, so you'd got the full nickel. There's a tree that goes that way. And another one here that comes off this way, plus all these branches right here that come in. Surely to goodness, there's a fish somewhere on some of this mess. Has to be. If he is, he wasn't over there. Throw over here. I want to get on some big bluegill on one of these trees. That's what I want. I want one of them big hand sized bluegill today. I'd settle for another bass or whatever, but I really wanted to hopefully get on some big bluegill today. That's coming over here. As I mentioned earlier, this is kind of a, of the bodies of water I have easy access to, it's definitely better bluegill fishing here than the other places. But so far, we ain't got very many good ones today. One more cast over there. We about to move on from this spot too. We just gonna keep moving y'all till we find them. That's all you can do. Just keep casting. Some fish better come along soon because I'm out of commentary. We're in bad shape. Y'all that's going to be listening to these birds chirp, which is, truth be told, probably better than listening to me flap my gums. Somebody had the idea. I can't remember who. Give them credit for They was like, y'all to do a live stream, just, just leave a camera running at the bird feeder of my house. People would tune in and watch the birds come to it. I got, I got, well, I got two. I got a, a bird feeder pole at the front of my house where I can see from the living room. And then I got another that's out on my back porch and I'm sitting out there, I can see them come up and eat. I got all kinds of birds in my house. Blue jays, cardinals. And little, I like the, I like the, the tufted titmouse. That's probably my favorite bird. Not that there's anything special about the bird itself. I just like to say titmouse. So I got a bunch of them, some woodpeckers. But they, I mean, they go through some seed and some of them, uh, I don't even know what to call them, blo the block things. The blue jays love and the woodpeckers love whatever's in them blocks. But, uh, yeah, somebody had the idea. It was like, you know, I'll just put a camera on them bird feeders and just leave it running. People could tune in throughout their day and 
watch the bird feeders. I don't know. I'd probably have three views on it, but <laughs> it'd be something to do. I like my birds. So here's a fish finally, y'all. Lord Almighty, how long has it been? Been about 10 minutes. We finally got us another one. Thank you, fish, buddy. We've been going through a dry spell. Where you been? Tell these people where you been. He ain't telling you nothing, man. He's out of here. He's got things to do, places to go. Go back over there, see if we can get another one. We do for a streak here. Sometimes it be like that. I hate that it's like that on the day where I'm feeling a raw and uncut. You do this style of video, you know, you hope you come out and you just tear them up. I don't want to post any skunk videos on my channel, you know, because that ain't good for nobody. I mean, regular viewers will tell you, oh, you know, it shows that you're real and whatnot, but and maybe it does for a handful of people, but most of the people who watch your video are going to be brand new to your channel. Never seen you before. And so ideally, on every video you post, you'd like to even if it's not a lights out kind of day, you'd like to at least show a little bit of competence that you have a little bit of knowledge and have an ability to catch a fish so that hopefully encourage them to come back. If the first video they see of you is a skunk video and you look like you don't know what you're doing, and Lord knows I'm not very entertaining anyway, they, the people really ain't got motivation or a reason to come back and ever watch again, you know, so. I do get skunked from time to time, but I sure don't want to post those kind of videos, but. If I have a day like today where I'm raw and uncut and I'm not getting a lot of fish, I'm catching fish, but not getting as many as I want, I think it's still. Kind of shows you the reality of fishing while still giving you a little bit of a little bit of fishing action. That's what I'll tell myself anyway. Well, I'm posting this damn video, by gosh. I came out here today to do a raw and uncut. And it's raw and it's uncut. <laughs> the only thing about this style of video, I don't have any editing to do, obviously, because I'm just turning the camera on and letting it roll. But one thing, when I'm when I do the video or putting the video footage on the computer from the GoPro, it saves everything in like, I forget the exact time, like 11 minute and some odd second files, which is fine that it does that. GoPro apparently segments everything. If you're filming continuously, they segment it into those smaller files so that if a file corrupts, you don't lose all of the footage. You'll only lose that 11 minute section or whatever. So I get the theory behind it. I get the reasoning behind it. But the problem that I have run into is that when you go to move your files from your SD card to your computer, GoPro doesn't necessarily save the files in order. So like I'll move everything over and then I have to go through and move the 11 minute clips around it's like sorting a puzzle out to figure out which goes in which order in the editing software. I don't know why it's like that, but it does create a little bit of a nuisance. So if you ever see one of my raw and uncut videos, tag gum I just cast over that tree. Now I got line all wrapped around my rod. <laughs> but anyway, if you was to ever see a raw and uncut video of mine and it had a clip that was just out of order, that's why. There we go. Now I got it back. I was wrapped around the rod behind me again. Just 
throw right there. Dead gummit. I can't cast worth a diddly poo today, man. There we go. Probably spooked any fish when I yanked that jig off that tree, but looks like it was worth casting to. Oh my gosh, I just threw over that other branch over there, y'all. We need a fish. I'll see if it, I think that's a buffalo right there. I've seen him swim by. I need a fish to eat that. Pull it off that branch, ain't gonna happen. Here we go, let's see if we can get lucky. Let's pull it behind me again. At least I didn't get caught in my other rod this time. <laughs> That's a better cast. First cast in the last 10 that landed where I wanted it to go. Watch us not catch anything. Let it sink down a little bit. They stingy today, folks. These fish are stingy with their bites. We'll forgive them anyway. Oh, oh. Am I, oh my gosh. <laughs> I got excited. It felt like a fish, but it ain't. It's a dang snag. <laughs> I set the hook hard on that. That was my best hook set of the day. Into the tree. Welcome to raw and uncut videos right here folks <laughs> again you sitting at your kitchen table right now you know damn well you've set your hook into a tree limb don't even sit there and pretend like you ain't i don't think i'm getting this in back though i'll tell you that i did too right there talent folks an average man would not have got that jig back, but me, no challenge at all. Talent, folks. It's really, it's it's a natural talent. And I just, my next cast, I get a fish over there, too. It's like a storybook. That's a storybook type thing right there. Look better bluegill, too. I redeemed myself with you, Bluegill. Casting into that tree, setting a hook on it, making a fool of myself. And next cast, putting it right in a fish's mouth. If I can get myself lined up a little better, I may catch a few out of that little pocket right there. I'm gonna try to anyway. We ain't getting no streaks going today. It seems like it's you catch a fish, you go a little ways, catch another one if you're lucky. I ain't got on that big school with just one cast after another. Well, I thought for sure we was going to pull more out of this little pocket, but what I get for thinking. Onward we go. Let's see what's around here. Just keep plugging along here, folks. That's all you can do. Just keep plugging along. May not be the most entertaining video for you to watch, but I'm enjoying myself out here today. It's a nice morning. I'm hung again. Daggummit. 
I didn't set the hook in it that hard. Hopefully we can get this one back. <laughs> I'm a little I'm a little gun shy on setting the hook after making a fool of myself on that last tree that I set the hook into at full speed. I don't know if I'm gonna get this one back or not. Good golly. I did not. Well, fiddlesticks, folks. I guess we're doing another, another retie. That's why I buy these jigs here in bulk, people. I do. I get them. Best place I can tell you to get your jigs for this very reason, because you throw around all these trees and rocks and stuff, you're going to go through a bunch. But eBay is the best place to get them. Just type in. I normally buy them, you know, 500 to 1,000 at a time. You buy them in bulk, you get less cost per jig head, and then, you know, obviously you're saving on shipping too by buying in the bulk. But just type in, if you want this style right here, just get on there and type in 164th ounce shad dart jig head and it'll bring up that style like that trout magnet style jig head and you'll find you some i just i don't have any particular seller on there that i buy from i just go to whoever's cheapest i mean it's just a, a jig head you know <laughs> i ain't i ain't worried about you know a specific seller or type you know i mean it's all just a piece of lead with a little number eight hook. But that's the cheapest place to go. If you if you try buying from the tackle shops and them little tin packs, you know, you gonna you're gonna go broke doing that because you're gonna spend 25, 30 cents per jig head. Maybe more nowadays. I don't know what they're up to now. But it's just gets expensive fast when you start throwing around all this brush and stuff. If you buy them in bulk, you buy these a thousand at a time, you can get them a few cents a piece. So it ain't as big a kick to the gonads when you snag five in a row. <laughs> We're back in business though. If you've stuck with me through the retie, we're back in the game now. We're ready to catch another one. I've been ready to catch another one all morning. Just like that. It's a little better one. A little better bluegill right there. Come on over here, sir. Let me put you on the board here. You may touch that eight inch line. the board at. Lay on that board there for us. One time lay on there. No, he ain't eight inches either. That's another about probably seven and a half, seven and three quarter. He looked a little bigger probably because I've been catching all these small ones out here today. But I did want to keep me a few small ones. So I'm going to do some live bait fishing with the smaller baits maybe tomorrow tomorrow or the next day one we'll see y'all again y'all may not see that video if it don't work out but the plan is to feed them tiny bluegill to some big fish that's the plan as Mike Tyson famously said, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. I think Mike Tyson's has got a marijuana company now. He's, he's into all kinds of business ventures. Then the movies. He was on wrestling years ago. I remember when he was 
the guest referee for Stone Cold Steve Austin and Shawn Michaels when Stone Cold won the belt. That was back when wrestling was good. I've been watching wrestling lately. On YouTube, they got uh, somebody's uploaded the old NWA shows from back in the 80s, like the full, the full shebang. NWA and WCW back in his own TBS. When I was a kid growing up, I'm aging myself here, but you'd watch wrestling on Saturdays and Sundays. Be on Sunday morning and Sunday night. TBS. 605. Somebody has uploaded them old episodes to the YouTube, so I've been watching some of them reliving my youth. It was so much better to watch back then. Nowadays, this crap they got on TV, you just can't. I can't sit through it. I guess it's po I guess one of them things where it's popular with the kids, so they keep doing it, but to me, as an adult, it's just, it's unwatchable. I'd rather watch the old stuff from the 80s than this new crap that's on there. I'm going to watch me reel in a fish right here, though. I got another one. We grinding out a bite, y'all. I don't know how many fish total I'm up to here. And however long we've been filming, but we grinding it out. Fish, if you, you know what? I was going to let you go, fish, but now you've acted like that, you're going in the bucket. Throw back over there. I keep hoping to just get on a concentration of them, just keep pulling them out one after another. Just ain't happened yet. May just be too. It may just be kind of an inactive day, you know. Maybe these fish just ain't real, real into eating right now. Oftentimes at dawn, dawn and dusk, you get that feeding window, and obviously there was some fish. These small skipjacks, they were coming up out there. Here's a fish out in the main channel. Man, we were seeing them splashing. So it leads me to believe that fish are active today. The birds have been chirping. You know, we've, we've, nature has been alive out here. But the, the fish that we're after, the bluegill and the bass, and crappie, if there's any over through here, not been as active, or I just ain't had a bait in front of them. I don't know. Thankful for the fish I'm getting, though. They all fun. Small fish need love too, y'all. People don't appreciate them, but if you learn to like catching small fish and you make catching small fish enjoyable with the right tackle set up, you're gonna live a better life because these small fish, they usually don't let you down. You know, you can go out and catch a bunch of them every day. If you're just specifically targeting trophy fish all the time, you know, trophy fish are called trophy fish for a reason. You don't get a trophy every day. You know, true trophy's gonna come along a couple times a year, a few times a year maybe if you're, if you're real good or real lucky. It's gonna be a lot, of, a lot of trips that you just don't get the results that you're hoping to get when you're only trophy hunting. But if you just, if you like the process and enjoy what you're doing or you enjoy catching the smaller fish, if you can make them fun, well, then you can have a good time every time you go out. And that's what I want to do. I want to have fun every day. Life's way too short to, even assuming I got another 40, 50 years in me, still way too short to, not try to make the most out of ever fishing trip you get. I 
I can't believe there ain't something on this big tree right here. Looks like a an oak tree maybe. Got some big oak trees in my yard. I like them. I got me a walnut tree. I got one walnut tree on my property that I have grown from seed. I got me several walnuts. I think it was back in. I got a fish swimming right here. Let's see what this is. Bluegill. No, that's a sunfish, I think. Where's your sunfish been at? Seen hardly any of you today. I think you're only the second one. Get out of here. The walnuts I planted, I got some of them seeds one fall. I think it was 2015 or 16. And I had one of them take and turn into a tree. And it's probably, it's been very slow growing. I think now it's probably five, six foot tall now. But it's starting to fill out. But it's been a very slow growing tree to be as old as it is now. Because I, I mean, I think it was 2015 or 16 I did that. So it's been several years. But it's just been a slow process. I don't know why them other seeds didn't take, but the other nut, I, I guess the nut has the seed in it. I don't know. I planted the damn walnuts. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to get at. And one sprouted. Keep making our way down through here. I'm telling you folks, today, man, it's it's catch a fish, make a few casts, nothing, catch another one. But we getting them, by gosh. Here's one. I didn't feel him, but my, oh, let it go. I didn't feel that one, but I saw my line moving. I see another looks like an oak tree maybe that's falling down try to work over here where I can get a cast onto it. these trees right here kind of stick out a little ways oh oh something's pulling right here now Oh, he's got me in something too. There he come. There he come out of it. He had me wrapped in something. He feels like a little better one too. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a better. That's a better bluegill right there. Bluegill, what's up, buddy? How you been? How's it going? How's life? You see, he's living well. Over there again. Yeah, at the end of the day, folks, you know, it'll be one of them situations. We're not getting on them consistently. But when I leave here today and and think about it, you know, we'll end up having got a bunch of fish. It's just I like I like them days a little better where it's one after another after another. <laughs> like I said before, when I do this style of fishing, I am looking to get a ton of action, a ton of bites. It wasn't the best cast, but we're rolling with it. Wanting to get over a little bit closer to that bank. I 
I gotta believe that there's something around one of these oak trees that's down through here. I mean, there's gotta be a school of fish on one of them. Oh, something hit me. Let that sink back down. I need to be letting all these casts sink down, but impatient, y'all. I'm impatient. I know them fish seem to be a little deeper today, and I still can't make myself sit there and wait 30 seconds to a minute for that jig to fall all the way down in 15, 20 feet of water. I ain't had to blow my nose on camera yet though, so that's that's good. Thought I had one right then. The allergies has been something else here lately, but hopefully whatever's been blooming is subsiding. Give me a little relief. There's a fish. There's another one too that's a little better. A little better quality of them was on that tree right there. Make another cast over there when we get this one unhooked. You got any friends over there with you? I think something's had hold of this fish, y'all. Look at this. Look at this mark on him right here. You see that? Let's see if he's got don't that side looks good, but that one right there. Almost looks like something got hold of him. Let's go right over again, see if he's got a friend. Every bluegill needs a friend. They need to work on a buddy system. The way they can see predators coming, you know. And they need to swim along beside each other like a, a front back formation. That way somebody's always looking at what's coming behind them. I ain't telling them how to live their lives, I'm just saying. Everything eats a bluegill. They gotta look out for themselves. Another lousy cast, but we're rolling with it. I'm just gonna let that sink down a little more. Nothing. I'm gonna throw one over here. There we go. Let's see what happens with that cast. Get your bets in now. Window's closing. Are we gonna catch one on this cast? I landed it approximately where I wanted it to go. I think the odds are the heavy favorite was that I was not going to catch a fish on that cast. Yep, whoever bet that I wasn't, you won that one. Let's make our way on down. The sun's burnt the fog off now. It's starting to make its way around to us here. That GoPro, that GoPro gets in direct sun. I guarantee you it's going to start overheating. We'll probably wrap this up here soon. The hell, we're at a, are we really at an hour and 54 minutes? Good hell. Don't seem like it's been that long. Well, we definitely, even if this thing don't overheat on us, we're going to be wrapping this up shortly. If anybody's still left watching, they ain't going to be watching much longer. Thank you. For anybody who sat through an hour and 54 minutes, out here with me this morning thank you means a lot to me that you think highly enough of me that you want to spend the morning out here fishing with me and i hope you feel like with this style of video i hope you feel like that you are on the trip with me that's the goal with this style of video so i hope that you feel like you've been out here and we just been conversating with each other even though it's just been me talking 
not any back and forth, you know. But I hope you feel like you've been here. Been enjoyable to me, anyway. You know, I ain't got the size or the number of fish that I have wanted to out here, at least not yet. But it's still been a good time. I'm going to keep fishing for another couple hours. I'll cut this camera off here in a few minutes, but or it'll cut off on its own when it overheats. But I'm gonna keep fishing another couple hours. I'm gonna just keep making my way down the shoreline here. Something thumped me right then. Did you see it? Did you see my line jump? <laughs> Get over here, Bluegill. We, we saw you. I felt you too, but the way that line jumped, I was gonna throw him in the bucket. He just jumped right out my hand. It's all right. I don't know how many I got in the bucket now. Enough. For, hey, look right. Oh man, I thought we was gonna have a have a streak going there, and I pulled it out of his mouth. I probably got enough in that bucket though to do what I want to do with them. best case scenario uh, catch a bunch of fish run out of bluegill I can always catch more so one thing good about small bluegill like this is they're pretty plentiful so you can find them pretty much anywhere that one splashed water up into my mouth I hope he didn't splash water on the lens it'll be something I've been filming for two hours with water all over the lens. <laughs> There's been worse things that have happened. I filmed videos before and got home and had no audio for any of the video. <laughs> it's technology. Great when it works, but boy when it don't. blown up too close over here this boat wake I'll have to get repositioned here in a second yeah let's get repositioned here tell you what let's do let's go on the other side of this tree there's there's a couple more trees right here looks like they come into the water right there so let's sneak around over here and See if we can cast at those. I need to wash this kayak. This thing got dust and pollen all over it from where it's set on my carport. I do enjoy this kayak. It's just the something about the simplicity. I know it doesn't take very long to put the batteries on a charger when you get home at the end of a trip, but just something about the fact that you have to. It's, I don't know, it's, it's tough to explain. Here's a fish. This is easy to explain right here. It's a better one. I think this might be a bass, possibly. Come up, jump for us, bass. Come up here. I think it's a smallmouth. He's fighting like heck, buddy. We want to see you jump, smallmouth. I think he's a better, this is a better fish right here. This may be the best one of the trip here. Of course, ain't nobody going to see it because nobody's still watching at this point. Yeah, it is. That's, that's a good bass. Nice. Nice smallmouth right there. Nice smallmouth. I do occasionally specifically target bass with the gulp minnow in ultralight, but I usually throw the three inch size and I'll and I use a little bit bigger hook. I use a number two size hook and that just kind of helps eliminate the bluegill bites and stuff so that you know your jig can fall through the water and, and get to the bass. Oftentimes if the bluegill are real aggressive, you can't, you can't get down through them to get to the bass. This one here, buddy, it's a nicer fish. I'm going to have to be careful with this one to keep from 
popping that line. Nice. Nice small mouth right there, y'all. What's your name, Smalley? You got a name? Did your parents call you anything? They just been saying, hey, you, your whole life. Let's throw him on the board here. Let's see what we got here. He ain't real big, but yeah, he's about 12 and three quarters or so there. Nice. Biggest, biggest small mouth of the day. Excellent time, though, on that ultra light, man. You saw how he had that rod double over, man. A fish like that, the smallmouth fight hard anyway. A fish like that can give you a dang good time on the ultralight. I got another fish right here. We two for two here, y'all. We going on a streak. It's happening. I can feel it down in my loins. All the way down in my innards, I can feel it. We're going on a streak right here. Two fish, two casts. How does it feel to be number two, Bluegill? Being number two means you are the, the doo-doo. And Bluegill, they've probably, never, they've probably never heard that saying before. Number two probably means something different in Bluegill language. I got another one. We three, we three for three now. And we'll have to get repositioned again, but we three for three. Where are we at in this video? Are we two minutes, two hours. I mean, I'll tell you what we're gonna do here, y'all. We're gonna fish on video here until we break our streak, and then we're gonna wrap this thing up. But we're gonna ride out this streak. I'm gonna flip this minna around. try to get it straight on there there we go we're going to try to end this video on a high note for anybody who stuck it out with me you're a real trooper well, we're going to, we're going to try to end it on a high note here get a streak going we're three for three right now small mouth two bluegill so far i'm going to get over here and try to get myself in such a way that I can make a decent cast. There we go. That's got potential. Just ain't had a long streak today. Six or seven, whatever it was. There, about an hour ago has been the longest streak we've been on. We may be about to end it right here. Doggone it. I had high hopes, folks. High hopes. Just like that. <laughs> Here, I wanna make, while, I'm, while I am where I am, I'm gonna make another cast. I know I said we was wrapping up the video when I ended the streak, but by the time I tell you all bye, I'll be moved from where I'm currently at to make that cast. I thought we was about to really get on something right there. Small mouth and two bluegill, and they said, they went back and told their friends, get out of town. There's a hurricane coming through. A hurricane named Justin, and he's gonna catch us all if we don't run for it. And they did, they listened. When them, when them bluegill talk, their friends listen. They got what's known as influence. Here's another one. I wonder what this is right here. Another bass. We got another bass right here. Yeah, that's another small mouth. There's some small mouth right here on this wood, y'all. This one's, this one's smaller than the other one we got there. There's definitely some small mouth right there, though. Nice. Throw over there again, why don't we? Finally getting on some fish here when it's time to wrap up the video. <laughs> We're gonna have a damn, we call them long movies. 
like like Braveheart, ain't Braveheart and the Patriot, them like, it's like a Mel Gibson movie, three hours long. Here's another fish. Let's see what this is. Is this another smallmouth? Yep. That's three smallmouth off this spot, y'all. Oh! He just tried to put that hook in my finger. That rude fish. Let's see if we can get another one of them. I'm going to try to cover the... I'm going to try to fish this bait and cover the camera with my hand because that sun has got a direct line to the screen which is going to fry it very quickly. It's already humid out here this morning, but it got hot when I got over here in the sun away from the shade. I know I'm wrapping up this video in a second, y'all. I promise, but I'm going to just get over here and make another cast at this wood over here at a different angle with us getting three smallmouth off there that quickly there's probably more smallmouth man they're high flying fish they can do some acrobatic stuff they can jump higher out of that water than what I could. That's for dang sure. <laughs> I'll make another cast up there tighter on it. And then I'm going to cast over here at this stump or whatever it is. And then, then, we, then we're going to end the video portion of this day. Oh, I had something hit me. Now I'm going to keep going. I'm going to make my way on down further on this shoreline here and see what I can get into. I'm going to have me a little off camera time today. Don't happen too often, but I do enjoy some days where I can just fish and not have to fool with the camera. And a day like today where my video will be done and I can just take the rest of my time and not have to flap my gums and not have to hold my hold my tongue there when I get caught in a tree and I want to let out a bunch of cuss words. I can just let them fly when the camera ain't going. <laughs> when the camera is going, people get upset with me if I if I say stuff. Here's another fish, another bluegill. That's two in a row. All right, for real this time. When this streak ends. When this streak right here ends, we, we're wrapping up the video for real this time. Let me get the pliers on this and you ate it a little too deep there, Bluegill. You lucky, you almost, you almost got it too deep. Bluegill said he don't feel lucky. He got a hook in the mouth. He said, how can I feel lucky when my mouth hurts like it does? Will the streak end at two? It just might. We just ain't been able to get a streak going. We've, we've got several fish today. Smallmouth, largemouth, bluegill, and green sunfish, but we just ain't been able to get them get on a school, you know, one after another after another. It just ain't ain't happened for us today but like i said you know i'll i'll go home today and i will have caught by the time i'm done you know off camera time probably 50 to 100 fish when it's said and done so i'm gonna fish another probably another couple of hours I'm just gonna keep working my way down through here but anyway y'all let me uh get the camera here what's the lens look like well the lens looks okay or maybe one water droplet right there. I can't tell. Hopefully it ain't interfered with the video. Lord knows you ain't seen a lot of fish caught on this one anyway, but you know what? We, you know, got several fish down there. And I ain't covered a lot of water. 
I started up there at the top where this creek comes out and have made my way down. So, I mean, you know, we're talking, I don't know, 300, 400 yards down through here in the last couple of hours. But just taking my time, just methodically, just working all this stuff, you get bites. And that bait right there, that, that little gulp, any plastic you want to throw, whatever your favorite plastic is, go out there, throw it. You'll have a dang good time, catch a bunch of fish. But anyway, I could sit here, flap my gums all day. Y'all probably, if you've stuck around this long, thanks. But you're probably sick of hearing me talk at this point. So I'm on. Wrap it up. Get back to fishing. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.